Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, we're going to take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter is moving through Capricorn and in each of your mini reports, I'm going to give you the dates as to when he's going to be there. But he will spend time in Capricorn during 2020 and for quite a bit of 2021. So this is a really important planetary movement that we're going to take a look at. I've got some notes which I'm going to take you through, which will together we'll go through Jupiter and Capricorn, what the feel of that is likely to be and what he's going to want us to be focused on. Right uh, now, we've really got to make a note of the fact that Saturn is also in Capricorn. Saturn will very much be in Capricorn just a few days from now, actually. Uh, yeah, just in a few days time, he's going to be moving into Capricorn. He is, of course, the owner of the house and Jupiter is Jupiter's going to be there, but uh, Saturn's in charge. So we've got to remember that as we talk about this. Now, Jupiter will be quite tightly conjunct with Saturn towards the end of 2020. So I'm not particularly talking about the conjunction as such. I'm ma mainly going to be talking about Jupiter's transit through Capricorn. So this is kind of nice and light and easy, quite simple. I'm not covering anything too complex here or too much uh, in detail. Uh, this is a bit more high level overview. But as we go through the year and as I cover your mini reports each month, uh, I will of course go into more depth. So for those of you who want to stay for the introduction, please do, welcome. Uh, those of you who want to click on to your mini reading, I will of course provide links so that you'll be able to just click on your bit and watch your bit and then carry on with your day. But for those of you who are sticking around, welcome. Now, as I said in my January video, and I imagine that some of you have been, you know, watching as I, as I make the videos, I mentioned in the January one that 2020 is going to be the year of love and action. Those are the two theme overarching overview kind of keywords for the year. Now how is that going to flow through the planets as they move throughout the year? Well as I said in the um, Saturn in Capricorn video that it's going to be about leadership right and if you are in a leadership position you'll really want to be um, getting a lot done this year. Action, it's an action year and you'll also want to be considering love and the kind of love I'm talking about is the all is one Saturnian type love that you know I consider all of humanity and the environment uh, before I make a move. So I also think I mentioned philosophical leadership is going to be needed during this Saturn in Capricorn type time. Uh, I've got a note here, think several times. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the chess master leadership style, right? You want to think a few times, you want to look at all the different possibilities and how things are going to work and play out before you do something. That would be quite ideal. Um, it's not particularly the time to be rushing too much or, or any of that. So we're clearly in Capricorn. Saturn's going to be here. Saturn is going to be a very stable and sturdy presence here over the next 2.5 years. But we're going to have some dashes of Jupiter mixed in, right? Now, the reason I say dashes of Jupiter is because he's going to be there. Uh, if I just dip into a mini report, we're kind of looking April, May 2020. And then he dips out and then he comes back November 20, 2020 through to April 4th, 2021. And then I think there again, he's going to, towards the end of 2021, I think then he's kind of there September, October, November, if I remember correctly. So we've kind of got these, these dashes, these long, lovely dashes of Jupiter that are coming into the picture. It's, it's really cool. And this is Jupiter in Capricorn. So what's Capricorn again? Capricorn is Earth. And when we're looking at Earth, we're looking at money. Money. I'm seeing that there's a money theme coming in here. And I think Jupiter's going to play a part. 
you know, we've got Saturn creating limits, possibly creating restrictions, um, creating redundancies, as I said in my Saturn in Capricorn video. Uh, you know, another thing I'd said there was a strategic view. You're going to want to take a strategic view on the intelligent allocation of resources. That's going to be really important. But I mean, when you bring Jupiter into this mix, and I've really been contemplating and thinking about what this means to have Jupiter and Saturn together in the same house of Capricorn. It's really interesting when you when you bring Jupiter in here, the focus is still very much going to be money. I kept coming back to money because we've got Jupiter rules banking, right? Uh, Jupiter, the word in Sanskrit guru, right? Guru means heavy in Sanskrit. There's another Latin origin that we've got here, Latin word gravis which is, you know, things that are heavy, grave, weighty, serious. And how do things get heavy? They get heavy through accumulation. You just keep accumulating. So like, think of a guru, think of a professor, think of a teacher. A teacher is heavy with knowledge, is heavy with wisdom. Think of all the so many books that they've read. Think of, um, Actually, and if I can, I'm going to put a picture of a screen on the screen of what it's like to study astrology. So I'll put a picture of that and you can see, right? Yeah, the, the guru, the teacher, the person who's, you know, studying something like astrology, right? Read lots and lots and lots of books and accumulate over time. There's, a, there's an accumulation energy that's really present with Jupiter. Another thing as I was studying and researching Jupiter for this video was that I came across one of my teachers who said um, that one of the energies here is that it's gradual and it's slow. And I thought about that because I don't, I don't really associate gradual or slow with Jupiter. I associate it more with Saturn. But then I started thinking about it and I thought, no, absolutely, Jupiter is gradual and slow. It's not a fast mover. Uh, so th this is not a time for anything rash or hasty or no we want to be very wise over the next couple of years with these energies in order to benefit from what they have to give us so Jupiter is definitely about accumulation over time slow growth and it is compound interest I often use that phrase for Saturn but I definitely think we can we can use that here for Jupiter as well so we're going to have Saturn here materializing things, uh, you know, earth, money, materializing, right, corporations. You think about what Saturn materializes in this area of Capricorn, corporations, right? Um, we could have another mini industrial revolution or something, you know. Um, there can be a lot of growth, business growth and opportunities and new pathways, new avenues. It's very exciting for business people. It's very exciting career-wise. Uh, and then we've, so we've got Saturn materializing things. We've got Jupiter accumulating, right? Accumulating, materializing, these fascinating energies are gonna be in play. I've got a note here. Does this mean we'll all get rich? Um, no, I don't know about that. I would love to think that could be the case. But it very much depends on your chart and where these things sit in your chart. But I do think that the focus is going to be on, on how we get rich, on our careers, on money, on materialization, on what we do here. Uh, this is going to be the focus. This is very much going to be the focus. It's earthy, it's practical, it's real, it's about money, it's about how we sustain ourselves. It is about the environment, hugely about the environment. We've got Saturn here who I definitely think is going to want us seeing, he's, he's going to want to see us factor in environment into all that we do. The all is one, right? That's going to be so important going forward. Uh, I've got a note here. I believe Saturn will be looking for justice and testing all links around money and around finances and around how we create and generate wealth in the world, how we support ourselves, our career. This is a real career time, right? It's a really great career, really great time if you're starting a business, I think. I think this is a terrific time to be starting a business 
because there's going to be a lot of planetary energy here I believe uh, you know and you can you can work with that you can use that you can let, let it carry you a bit. You know, could this be a wave that you can surf, right? There's going to be some momentum here. There's going to be some energy here. So let's use it. I've got a note here. Financial institutions are going to be in focus. Absolutely. Financial institutions of all kinds. So yes, Jupiter rules banking. Uh, and you think about things like stock market, speculative gains, you think about all these different bodies that manage and regulate the financial industries. There are so many. I once worked for a technology firm that created software that would uh, safely ensure that the packet of information, if you hit send on your mobile phone for a stock trade, there's a little packet of information and instruction that gets sent um, to the stock market and then, you know, it comes back and says, yes, your trade was successful or whatever it is. Now, in the however many seconds that movement has happened, it's very mercurial. That little packet of information has darted along so many different institutions that it's not funny, right? There are so many um, I institutions at play, heaps. And yeah, what I've got written here is that the wisdom and intentions behind money and all of these different institutions is really going to get a good checking through by Saturn. This is a very important time and I imagine that some interesting things might be found out. Corruption hopefully is going to be weeded out. If you're greedy, hopefully you know um, that gets attended to. So I've got a note here and, and greed is a thing because I believe they say you know the stock market is um, is run by fear and greed and that's about it you know uh, these are the energies behind the stock market so that's going to be really interesting and on the stock market thing I did do some research today and I found out that when Jupiter was last in Capricorn uh, I don't know if it was last in Capricorn I didn't click through and check that whole thing but I did see that in 1997 Jupiter was definitely in Capricorn and we had a mini crash uh, October 27, 1997 mini crash and this information is coming from Wikipedia. It says here that um, the point loss that the Dow Jones Industrial Average suffered on this day, so that's October 27, 1997, uh, it currently ranks as the 20th biggest point loss and the 15th biggest percentage loss since the Dow's creation in 1896. But I thought that was really interesting because that was Jupiter's movement through Capricorn. And again, we're going to have Jupiter's movement through Capricorn. And I, I definitely think that, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say that there's going to be a crash or any of that, but I definitely think that because we've got Saturn here as well, and, and Saturn's got a justice component going on, he wants honesty, you know, I definitely think that if there are institutions, and you think about all those bodies that are in between, you know, you sending a trade and... and all those regulatory bodies and um, clearing houses and different financial instruments, these are all going to get a good checking through, right? They're all going to be looked at. And I've got a note here that you know, this applies to everyone from George Soros to you and me, right? And, and George Soros, uh, I've got the note here for whom a bank is a paintbrush, right? So you think about for him, like when I look at these institutions, I look at them up here and I, I hope, oh, one day I might have some money to buy a share or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like they're up here and I'm, oh, could I touch those one day, right? Someone like George Soros, those institutions are down here and he's looking and he's going, oh yeah, there's a bank. Oh yeah, there's a stock exchange. There's the, these are all paintbrushes through which he has fun. He creates what he wants, you know, um, he's quite incredible. So for him, a bank is a paintbrush. It's a creative tool through which he engineers society or, or you know, I mean, that's, that's his creativity. It's very different to mine. Um, you know, mine is looking at stars and interpreting meanings and looking at individual lives and, and helping you guys, you know, um, to make sense of this world, which is a lot of fun. 
and it doesn't require a bank, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but yeah, I mean, his work it, it involves all these institutions. I, I was thinking about him in that way because I was thinking about kind of the top 10% of society and I was thinking about the decisions that they'll be making and those decisions have far reaching implications and impact on all of us. But then we're all the top 10% of something ourselves. I'm just looking at the time. Good, 15 minutes, we're okay. Uh, I, I was thinking about, you know, what, what are we the top 10% of? And let's say you're a mom with a baby and you have a job and, and that's your life. Well, you're the top 10% of that situation and you'll be making executive decisions that will, uh, you know, have far-reaching implications. Maybe you're going to set up a savings plan for your little one. Maybe your decision will be, well, uh, this year instead of shopping at Waitrose, I'm going to shop at Sainsbury's. I always shop at Sainsbury's. I hardly go into Waitrose. But, <laughs> but it's that kind of thing, right? Um, you know, that's the kind of thing I was thinking about, that like regardless of where you are in society, you are a top 10% of something. Even if you're just a top 10% of your, you know, one man band show like I am, right? I, I'm just this uh, making content on YouTube and, um, you know, yeah, I, I have to look at my life strategically. And well, we're gonna come to some examples. Uh, why don't I bring this up now? So. Examples of how this will play out, right? Jupiter in Capricorn. Okay, I am this one-man band show. I make my YouTube channel. I, I do whatever I do. Uh, and I have to think about, you know, the, the various things uh, that I have to look after. My domain is clearly very small. But a um, friend of mine, she gave me a really good idea. She said, you should install this application on your smartphone that will aggregate your spending. It, it'll tell you, you know, wh where your money's going. So, for example, and that, I, I've got the note here, aggregate, it's a very Jupiterian type word, an aggregate, you're looking at total figures of things. So, when we put this app on our phone, I'll be able to click and see, okay, at Sainsbury's, I spent £2,000 over the last 12 months, or whatever it is, whatever it is that I spent, or, or oh, look at that, I went to Cafe Nero, and uh, over a whole year, I spent 500 pounds, or, or whatever it is, right? So, this is a really clever little app that does those kind of calculations. So, that is an example of a really good activity that we can all be doing while this Jupiter-Saturn type thing uh, is on for the next year or two, right? So that you can take a strategic look at your life and, and see where the money is, is really going. I actually, there's another example I had. I updated my operating system on my laptop just recently and it actually asked me, do you want us to, to install a productivity app that will tell you how much time you're spending on YouTube, how much time you're spending on productivity apps or something like that? I immediately went, no, I don't want to know that, please, no. <laughs> Please don't tell me how much procrastinating I do per year. That would really not be very helpful. So let's have a look at another example of this aggregate type thing. This is happening in the news. So in the Business Insider on the 16th of January this year, there was this headline which I took a note of. Uh, Brexit will have soon cost the UK more than all its payments to the EU over the past 47 years put together. Wow. Right, so this is going to be the kind of um, strategic exercise that I think will be very useful and it needs to happen over the next couple of years. We need to be looking at life in this way, we need to be looking strategically, right? So, looking at aggregates, looking at things all added up and, and bunched up and kind of having a, a bit of a view on things, right? As, as George Soros might be able to look at a bank and see it as a paintbrush. We need to be able to perhaps strategically look at the activity of our lives and see, all right, well, a large chunk of energy is going there, right? A large chunk of energy is going there. What do I need to do? You can look at it in energetic terms as well. You can look at it in terms of who do I spend a lot of time worrying about, which I shouldn't be because 
they don't know I exist anyway or whatever it is, right? You know, that kind of thing. These kind of activities are going to be really useful and getting very practical and, and you know, um, getting a bit organized about these things, right? Uh, Jupiter can be... See, as Jupiter expands, Jupiter can also sometimes be a bit lazy, right? But we've got Saturn here, um, hopefully, you know, whipping us into shape and uh, getting us in line. So I think this is going to be a really interesting time. Another note that I've got here about Jupiter and what its effects can be is to do with our weight right so this is an interesting one now this I'd love to have your feedback on this if any of you notice this as well over the Saturn Ketu period I I, I feel like people lost weight I, I saw it happen with certain friends of mine uh, people that I know really well and have known for many many years and I've seen photos of them and I thought wow they've really lost weight over this last year I know I lost weight over last year and I found it really hard to put it back on and I'm trying to put it on I'm always trying to put on weight like that is my thing if I can um, put it on that's what I want to do because I always prefer um, that and I noticed from 2018 my videos like I yeah I've lost it and it's hard and it's because of I think it's because of Saturn Ketu that's what I'm blaming anyway but the reason I say this is because um, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis she had Ketu in her first house and she was a very slim lady and she found it very hard to put on weight so Ketu can have a real slimming effect on the body now I've got a question mark here is this going to be a year of weight gain right because we're going to have Saturn and uh, Jupiter together it's earth there's materialization and can is Saturn going to amplify Jupiter a little bit and materialize it right so an example of this is so we had Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis K2 in the first house slim lady we've got Marlon Brando Jupiter in the first house he didn't stop putting on weight right as he grew older he kept getting bigger I tend to think that's probably his Jupiter in the first house there um, I'm not sure of this it's a little bit of a wild theory that I have but maybe you can let me know but I, I do wonder why is it that I lost weight last year and I tend to think it's um, Saturn Ketu and I've been trying to put it on you know I eat chocolate and, and things that aren't good for me <laughs> I eat everything uh, I'm more of a vegetarian but um, I kind of relaxed about that towards the end of last year I was you know winter time here in the UK and I was eating a bit more meat uh, well not a bit more meat I was kind of brought meat back in I kind of went vegan for a couple of years but it's interesting when I was vegan the, the weight wasn't a problem I didn't lose any weight because of that really interesting and now I've been kind of I don't know trying to put it on I don't know well anyway if any of you have any stories about that please I'd, I'd love to hear in the comments below but I think what we're going to do is we're going to get on with the mini reports now I can see that the time is 23 minutes so it's probably likely to cut hi everyone apologies camera got cut as it does we're going to jump straight into Aries moon though so hopefully you're in Aries moon and you're here to hear what Jupiter is going to be like in Capricorn Aries moon from, and I'm going to give you some dates these are rough dates but if you want precise dates you can have a look in the description below I'll put them there so we're looking at roughly April May 2020 and then November 20 2020 through to April 4th 2021 we're going to have Jupiter in Capricorn we will have Jupiter in Capricorn again we're kind of looking at uh, I think it's September October November of 2021 so as I say we're going to have these kind of nice long dashes of Jupiter uh, mixed in there with uh, with Saturn in, in Capricorn so for you Jupiter is in your 10th house um, this will help you accumulate professional experience and contacts possibly some more money but uh, things could be challenging as well in your career with this placement it's a bit of a mixed placement for you okay so while I'm not saying it's it's not terrible but it's not brilliant there are some signs where it's brilliant and <laughs> it's not brilliant for you but it's it's um, it's mixed is what I am going to say so look out for um, the ability to keep accumulating professional experience in your career of course that's just going to continue um, 
but there might be some challenges and of course challenges that's where we grow the most so do look forward to those challenges if you can fifth aspect on your second house is favorable for you uh, to add to your long-term savings so that's good you should be able to grow your big wealth your big money in the world during these times um, and it should be positive for family relationships as well ninth house aspect on your sixth house uh, may stimulate a desire to put more energy into your career and service in the world could also stimulate competition at work so that could be where some of your career challenges are really coming from okay uh, but if maybe if you can shift your focus to the fact that you are providing service to the world and sometimes I've had this when I've been in tricky jobs and I've been thinking what is the purpose of me being in this job and it's just a stepping stone and what am I doing here and and then I turn my attention to the people that are immediately around me. When I was working at HSBC, I was sat next to this very angry man. And I used to wonder why am I sat here? And I realized, do you know what? Maybe my peaceful vibe is needed to just bring some peace to him. And that's how I started to work. And I started to focus on that. And I noticed his mood used to, it, w it would improve. He started to improve. Um, so it's pretty incredible and I think that's because I changed my view instead of thinking oh why did they sit me here next to this awful person <laughs> I uh, changed my view and I was like no I'm needed because you know I'm meant to shine my light quietly and um, yeah and and it worked it worked when I shift my view back to myself so I've got a quick note here that Saturn is here wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources that's going to be something that you'll want to be um, looking at Aries Moon. So Aries Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we're now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, hello. We're taking a look at Jupiter in Capricorn. Uh, so he's going to be there for precise dates. Look at the description below, but he's going to be there roughly April, May 2020. And then November 20, 2020 through to 4th April 2021. So that's quite a long stretch. And I think we're going to have him there kind of um, September, October, November, I'm pretty sure, towards the end of 2021. So what does this mean for you? So for you, Jupiter is in your ninth house. Oh, this is a good one. This is great. I'm very happy for you, Taurus Moon. You got good, good transit here. Uh, this will help you accumulate professional knowledge, academic knowledge, skills relating to your career. This is an excellent placement. Um, great for professional growth. Great for a relationship with your spouse. Gurus would love to mentor you. You might find a mentor that you love. This is just good, good stuff here. So this is great. Fifth aspect on your first house requires you to look after your health. Uh, so put in a health routine if you can. Ninth house aspect on your fifth house stimulates your creativity, your romantic relationships, and your children. And that could be your, your project, your maybe it's your business, whatever you consider your baby. Maybe you're writing a book. Maybe you have children and you're so lucky to have children and you can spend time with them. You will love the time that you spend with them. This is just a beautiful transit. So Taurus Moon, the other thing that I do want to say before I finish off is to say that Saturn is here. So you will need wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources. But uh, otherwise, it's a terrific transit. So I wish you well, Taurus Moon. Gemini Moon, precise dates you'll find in the description below. But we're looking at roughly April, May 2020. And then we're looking at November 2020 to about April 2021. And then I think we've got Jupiter there again, sort of September, October, November. But have a look below and you'll see the precise dates. So for you, Jupiter is in your eighth house, Gemini Moon. Uh, you might have to work harder to earn more. You'll want to be easy in your relationships with family. Be humble. Okay. Um, fifth aspect on your 12th house will be good for spiritual growth and possibly enable a foreign getaway. How exciting. Uh, ninth house aspect on fourth house is where you'll have to be careful with family. Okay, yeah, you've got to be careful with family. Um, plus, keep a check on spending. Uh, while you may be able to earn more through hard work or some expansion, expenses could run quite a bit higher too. So Gemini Moon, this is a bit of a mixed bag kind of a transit for you but uh, on the whole it's it's not looking too bad at all saturn is here that's my final note to everybody saturn is here so just remember that you'll want to have some wisdom when it comes to the strategic allocation of resources so gemini moon thank you so much for joining we're now going to welcome cancer moon
Cancer Moon, welcome. Uh, the precise dates are going to put in the description below, but basically we're looking at April, May 2020, and then November 2020 to April 2021. And then in 2021, I think we've got sort of September, October, November, somewhere there, we're going to have more Jupiter. So it's a, it's a good, uh, you know, Jupiter transit here. So for you, Jupiter will be in your seventh house. This is a great transit. This is a very good transit. Oh, good on you. Great transit. Excellent for business people, for partnerships, marriage, for meeting the one if you are single, right? And on that, if you are single, ladies in particular, manifest a husband, okay? Jupiter is husband in your chart. So this is great. And also I heard that the twin flame bridge is open for all of 2020. So very good time to meet someone. Um, fifth aspect on your 11th house is making you lucky and generating numerous opportunities for your growth. So this is really great. Uh, ninth house aspect on your third house mm, gives you courage, it might enable you to try new things that you never thought were possible. So that's really brilliant, especially uh, out in the dating scene, perhaps. So um, it's also a good time for short trips. And overall, Cancer Moon, I'm going to say this is a really beautiful transit for you. So I wish you well, Cancer Moon. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Uh, so for precise dates, have a look at the description below, but I'm saying roughly sort of April, May 2020, and then we've got November 2020 to April 2021, and then we've got, I think kind of September, October, November, uh, we're also going to have some more Jupiter and Capricorn there. So now for you, Jupiter will be in your sixth house. This can increase debt or health issues, okay, so this is one to watch out for. Can increase problems with competition at work. Could just make things a bit more challenging on the work scene. So go easy, go slow to navigate all this. Doesn't mean that there's any, any problems or anything, but this is just about, it's like a weather report, right? It's like, you know, there's a bit of rain, take an umbrella. So this is a little bit of uh, some clouds here. Um, fifth aspect on your 10th house may be causing issues with seniors at work. So there's a bit more work pressure there. Yeah, sixth house, 10th house, okay. Uh, ninth house aspect on second house, this is good. Um, this will help you save money. With a bit of luck and positive thinking, you should be able to um, increase your big savings. And home life, family life could provide a nice retreat if this transit is causing you some issues. So look, if, if there are some issues, um, you know, retreating to family could be the way to go. Uh, you know, possibly even a bit of travel with the family, who knows. But also bear in mind the fact that Saturn is here and you'll just want to be as an overview, as an overall thing, you'll always want to be looking at the wisdom um, in the strategic allocation of resources. So, you know, Jupiter's here bringing the wisdom and of course Saturn is clocking up resources or allocating them or whatever he's doing but um, but that's something that you'll want to be focused on as well so Leo Moon thank you so much for joining and we're now going to welcome Virgo Moon Virgo Moon welcome so if you want the precise dates will be in the description below but we're really looking at kind of roughly April May 2020 we're looking at November 2020 to April 2021 you're going to have Jupiter and Capricorn in your fifth house. Oh, this is a terrific transit. Lucky you, Virgo Moon. This is good. This is good. This is good. I love this. Okay, so this is a great transit. It's great for love. It's great for romance. Uh, I've got a note here. Ladies, you could meet and marry your husband possibly because Jupiter Saturn materializes a husband, right? Um, Jupiter is husband in a woman's chart. Saturn materializes things. So you could materialize a husband, right? Um, it's, a, it's an odd thing to say, materialize a husband, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> right, fifth aspect on ninth house is making you lucky, making you shine. This is good. Ninth aspect on your first house may, may get you to make some changes to your physical health. So don't forget to exercise and eat well, right? Um, don't forget to look after your physical body, okay, during the, this transit. But overall, this is a beautiful transit. You might even be able to acquire profits uh, through speculation. I've got a note here, jewels, vehicles, prize objects can be yours. That was something that I saw in the research and I was like, cool, that is awesome. Now, let's not forget that you've got Saturn here in this house as well. So you're always going to want to be exercising wisdom 
in the strategic allocation of resources. So Virgo Moon, I think it's a fantastic transit for you. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now for precise dates, look at the description below, but really we've got sort of April, May 2020, then we've got November 2020 to April 2021. Uh, Jupiter is in Capricorn. <clears throat> Pretty sure he's also there September, October, November, somewhere there towards the end of that year. But for you, how is this going to affect you, Libra Moon? Well, um, Jupiter is in your fourth house. So it's kind of mixed results here. Uh, be careful with, so while there'll be opportunities for expansion and things like that in a general sort of a sense, you will want to be careful with spending too much. You'll also want to perhaps look after family members, mother's health might come into question, that sort of thing, or just be a bit easygoing in how you interact with your family members. You've got fifth aspect on eighth house, uh, which can cause further issues with extended family members, all right? So that's another thing to look out for there. Ninth house aspect on 12th house, this is good, right? So you might, uh, well, you will definitely be able to grow spiritually through this time. You might even get a little foreign getaway if you need one. But if you travel, please do be careful, all right? Um, the other thing is that we've got Saturn in this house. He is the Lord of the house. And the one thing that you're always going to want to bear in mind is wisdom you'll want to um, engage your wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources so that's just something to bear in mind there so Libra Moon thank you so much for joining and we're now going to welcome Scorpio Moon Scorpio Moon welcome thank you for joining now I'm just going to go through this really fast if you want precise dates they're going to be in the description below but we're really looking at April May 2020 and then we're looking at November 2020 to about April 2021 and then I think September, October, November 2021 um, we've also got Jupiter in Capricorn. So for you Jupiter's in your third house. This is a bit of a mixed transit. Uh, you may find that business growth slows down. Things may not move fast enough for your liking. Okay, you've got a fifth house aspect on your seventh house, which is good for business. It's also good for your marriage. So that's great. That might stimulate um, some growth for you. So that's fantastic. There's a ninth house aspect on your 11th house that may make you lucky. Uh, it may stimulate networking and opportunities to come your way. So it's a it's a mixed transit. You've got two very good and positive um, aspects, but where Jupiter is placed house wise, might not be um, brilliant, you know, and that's where his impact is most going to be felt. So watch this, see how it manifests for you, and um, yeah, see how it goes. So now bear in mind the fact that Saturn is here as well. So you're going to always want to exercise wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources. So that's just a little note there, Scorpio Moon. Thank you so much for stopping by, and we're now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, the precise dates are going to be in the description below. Oh, good, we're at the 15 minute mark, not too bad. Precise dates are in the description below, um, but basically, roughly, we've got April, May 2020, and then we've got November 2020 to April 2021. Jupiter is going to be in Capricorn, and then I'm pretty sure he's there kind of September, October, November 2021 as well. So for you, Jupiter is in your second house. Oh, this is a great transit. I'm so happy for you. Uh, great time to build long-term wealth and savings. You may be recognized by your peers. You may be recognized with awards or status improves or something like that. Um, relationships with family and health can improve as well. Fifth aspect on your sixth house may stimulate competition at work. So watch out for any of that. Um, could also stimulate activity around legal battles and things like that. Um, could also mean you might want to watch your health. So it depends on how that's going to play out for you there. But that's something to watch out for. Um, ninth house aspect on your 10th house may mean seniors at work scrutinize your work more closely. Yeah, so watch out for that as well. But otherwise, you've got a very good transit, okay? Because where Jupiter sits housewise is brilliant for you. So that's fantastic. The other thing that I'm saying to all signs is just remember that Saturn is also here. So be sure to exercise wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources. So Sagittarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. 
Capricorn Moon welcome. Uh, so for precise dates, look at the description below, but um, roughly we've got April, May 2020, and then we've got November 2020 to April 2021, and then I'm pretty sure we've got September, October, November, something like that. Um, Jupiter will be in Capricorn, right? So for you, Jupiter is in your first house. So this is a bit of a mixed transit. Um, you might find that there are more arguments uh, around you, perhaps some confusion, um, that kind of thing, but be humble and you'll be fine, okay? So just be humble, you'll get through anything. Uh, fifth house aspect. Fifth, fifth aspect on your fifth house is great. This is really good for your creativity, great for entrepreneurs, okay? So be putting yourself into your creativity. It's also great, should have a good time relationship with children, possibly even some romance coming through this. So this is good. Uh, ninth house aspect on ninth house may make you lucky. So this is great. Um, may bring you an excellent guru, help you to gain wisdom or grow spiritually. So you've got nice aspects here. Um, that's why it's a bit of a mixed transit for you. But in the house where Jupiter sits, which is the first house, that's where the impact will most be felt. So watch this transit, see how it manifests. But you've got some nice rays in here. Um, one thing I would also say is look after your physical health as well. Eat well, exercise well, rest well. Okay, don't overdo it. Um, that's another thing I would say as well. Saturn is here. Uh, so you're going to want to exercise wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources. So Capricorn Moon, thank you so much for joining and we're now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. So for precise dates, look at the description below. But really we've got kind of April, May 2020 and then we've got November 2020 to April 2021. Jupiter will be in Capricorn. And I'm pretty sure he's there kind of um, September, October, November, but check below to see that. Uh, so for you, Jupiter is in your 12th house. This is a bit of a mixed transit. Um, expenses can be really high because of this placement. So watch that. Um, otherwise, this is great for solitude, great for spiritual growth, great for a little getaway to a foreign land or something like that, a little retreat. Uh, so fifth aspect on your fourth house may bring challenges at home with family members. So that's something to watch there. And ninth house aspect on your eighth house may bring issues with extended family or dealings with other people's resources. So it's actually quite good that you've got Jupiter there in the 12th house, which is isolation. You might be in need of some isolation, which is great. Get it if you can get it. Uh, Saturn is here. So for all signs, I'm also just encouraging that we exercise wisdom in the strategic allocation of resources. So that's a bit of a blend of Jupiter and Saturn together there, you know, exercising wisdom in how we strategically allocate our resources. So Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now I'm going to put precise dates in the description below but um, just roughly we've got April, May 2020 and then we've got November 2022, April 2021. Jupiter will be in Capricorn. So for you, Jupiter is going to be in your 11th house. By the way, also, he might be there kind of September, October, November um, of 2021 as well. So for you, Jupiter is in your 11th house. This is a great transit. It's a great time. Oh, you've got a great transit. This is really, really good. I'm so excited. Great transit, great time. You're having a good time, Pisces Moon. I can see this. This is good. Great transit, great time for earning opportunities. Um, great time to acquire new things. Great time with children. So that's fantastic. Um, fifth house aspect, well, fifth aspect on your third house may challenge your confidence. Uh, but press on. You've got a really good transit here. Ninth aspect on seventh house is excellent. Excellent. Ex oh, this is very good for stimulating growth. Um, of your business and for married life as well. Overall, Pisces Moon, this is a fantastic transit for you. So get into Jupiterian energy. We're yellow, you know, we're gold, we're all that stuff. Um, Saturn is here. So I'm also just saying to all signs that, you know, be wise in the strategic allocation of resources. Uh, that's going to be important. Um, that's adding a bit of that Jupiterian wisdom into the strategic allocation of resources, which is very much Saturn's theme as he transits 
Capricorn. So Pisces Moon, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you to anyone. I'm just looking at the time. It's 21 minutes there, so I managed to do it. Yay, within one take. Um, <laughs> thank you to anyone who's watched the whole thing in one go. Um, thank you to everybody who watches these videos. Thank you so much. And please do subscribe if you feel so inspired it really helps me out a lot actually um please comment like share do all those wonderful things and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.